Hello everyone, great to have you here for this edition of Media Marks Weather. Welcome to the channel. We're going to be watching the tropics as we head on into the weekend and next week. Yes, we could actually have an area of concern, especially next week. We'll get into all the details for that, along with a storm winding up here across parts of the Midwest and the Northeast that could kick up some snowfall, especially some higher elevation accumulating snow through the end of this week. Let's get into it. And we'll also be discussing a little bit later on in this forecast video segment, what is this showing up in the parts of the Northeast? All right, so starting off here with the tropics first, we're going to take a look and see if we have anything going on. What is the remnants left here of Sarah? Yeah, that's going to be propagating in this trough, this frontal boundary pushing to the east. We're going to have to deal with this as we head throughout the day on Wednesday. Actually, the looks like the late night of getting into Wednesday, early Wednesday morning, actually, is when some of this starts to come on shore. Now, it does weaken greatly there throughout the day. Look at that. By 1 p.m. on Thursday, it's completely off the coast with high pressure building in. Now, the rest of the tropics look actually pretty quiet here. We do have a few showers across the Western Caribbean, Central America. Of course, we know you don't need any more rain around Honduras and Belize here and the Yucatan Peninsula. So it, hopefully we can get at some sort of a drying trend. We're still dealing with this frontal boundary that is going to scour out a lot of humidity as it heads to the south and east here. So let's just continue to go out here in time. A few showers moving through Jamaica on the 23rd here. Look what does start to form, though. This is on this latest run. We do have a tropical wave southeast of Jamaica as we get on into early next week. Look at that. It's going to bring some very hefty rains here. The 25th or on the 26th here from Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, and the eastern part of Cuba. Look where it just kind of sits here and hangs out. Now, we do have a trough, another trough digging in here across the Western Caribbean. That will continue to move slowly south and east there. But look at this. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then we got another surge of moisture here, another wave that we're going to have to watch around Honduras. So there's going to be two areas as we head through the last part of November into December 1st here. Look at this. Yeah, and this latest run of the GFS, I do caution you, this is 384 hours out, but the trend has been to produce some sort of early December storm here as well. All right, flipping over to the European run here. Let's see if we got the similar thing going on here. We got a high pressure just off the coast of Florida. As that storm heads east, what's left of this trough and uh, remnants of tropical storm Sarah moves over Florida here 7 a.m. Some showers, gusty showers moving through. You can see this trough actually kicking showers all the way down to Belize and Cancun here. So, yeah, unfortunately, more rain for Central America as well there. That clears Florida by the 21st. Look at that. That frontal boundary sinking far to the south and to the east here, actually dragging that boundary through Jamaica around the 22nd. So let's get on into the 23rd, 24th. There it is. Just like on the GFS, we're showing a very large, broad area of tropical wave, tropical disturbance type material here. For some reason, our European model cuts out the precipitation once we get to hour 144 here. I'm going to have to look into that and see what's going on. But here we go. Yeah, Caribbean really filling up with a lot of moisture here. And as we continue to go out here in time, let's see if any low pressure, doesn't look like any low pressure is initiated. Unfortunately, we don't have our precip overlay here for the most part, except for up here and down and through here. But there's that high pressure. Anything that would develop would continue on a west-northwest track. All right, so if we take a look at the European rainfall amounts here across the Caribbean, we're going to take a look here. Yeah, unfortunately, as we head on into the weekend and the next week, that means more rainfall for coastal Nicaragua here. We're going to have to keep a really close watch on that. 100 to up to 200 more millimeters of rainfall here. This is just awful with the tropical wave kicking in here across the Caribbean and the Eastern Caribbean here in Western Atlantic. There we go from Trinidad and Tobago up to the Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico. Into the Dominican Republic, we're going to be looking wetter as we head into next week. We're going to be looking at rainfall amounts into the weekend, 40 to 80 millimeters. That'll get us up towards uh, close to three quarters to one and one half inches of rainfall. All right, so let's do a uh, precipitation type overlay here. See how far our HRRR can get out with this system. And then we'll switch over to the synoptic model. So here we go. We're going to start off. Let's see if this thing will load. There we go. So as we head through the rest of your... 
Tuesday night into Wednesday. There's those showers moving through, and then heavier showers start to move through. This is 3 p.m. on Wednesday. Look at this. This actually looks like a convective line moving through uh, Cleveland here, so you might have a rumble of thunder as this pushes through, too. Pretty heavy rain, but it stays all rain. Look at that. Pushes to the northeast towards Buffalo and Erie, but look what starts to set up behind it. Here's 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Look at these bands of snow setting up here west of here so you do start to get some secondary low development over here with this trough kicking to the east so heavier precipitation looks like mostly rain at this point along the i81 corridor of new york and pennsylvania but look at this snow kicking just behind it here might have some wet snowflakes as we get two areas of low pressure here, one around New York City by this time and one north of Chicago, bringing some of these bursts of heavier snow. This is uh, the 21st at 1 p.m., so this is getting into Thursday afternoon. And look at how this is just congealing. This looks really interesting. And this precipitation shield over here, these two pieces of energy will start to come together. But the higher elevations over here in New York and Pennsylvania – do stand a chance to get some potential advisory criteria snowfall. All right, so I wanted to show you the precipitation overlay here on the GFS as we continue with our synoptic pattern. So let's just put this into motion. Yeah, as we can see throughout the uh, Wednesday here through 7 p.m., you can see, yeah, that coming through Cleveland, that is all rain through 4 p.m., but look at that. That's when we start to change over to snow, especially on Thursday morning around 7 a.m. Look at this. Yeah, anywhere into the blue areas, that's lighter to moderate snow. And then see this area across Binghamton, Scranton area, down and through the southern Catskills, Poconos. This is some heavier bursts of snow, and this is around 7 p.m. on the 21st. So this is Thursday evening. So some of the temperature profiles, especially above 1,800 feet, could really get some three inches or more of heavy wet snow here. I'll show you those snowfall amounts momentarily here, but here we go. The backside of this low pressure kicking through parts of southern Ohio, eastern Kentucky, West Virginia. We might actually pick up some accumulations here as well, but look at this low really winding up here. This is 1 a.m. on early Friday morning. Look at that kicking through 4 p.m. So we're in the thick of this all the way through Friday morning across much of New York and Pennsylvania here before the low really starts to fill in. And then it starts kicking out over here. A secondary low really starts to crank towards Nova Scotia. And we start to kick these snowflakes out and it kind of gets mixed with rain and many, even these, some of these higher elevations. So we do have a very shallow layer of cold air to work with, especially if those heavier bands of precipitation get going here. But as we go out here in time, let's just go out here through Thanksgiving to see what that precip type was. So as we see yeah, that next frontal boundary moving through, that's all rain as we get into Monday and Tuesday next week. But look at this. Yeah, look what's barreling towards us here for the 27th, Thanksgiving, into, here's the 28th, which is Thanksgiving. Look at this. This storm, the GFS, has it moving up into the northeast, and we actually have some sort of Thanksgiving snow event up here in the parts of northern Pennsylvania, upstate New York, Massachusetts, parts of New England. This can get pretty interesting as, you know, these lows will have a tendency to move up like this. So we might actually switch over to rain in some of these areas eventually. But it's going to be interesting to get some heavier bursts of snow. There it is. And that secondary low forms off the coast and remains in a pretty progressive flow with lake effect behind it. Before we continue with more weather coverage here, don't forget if you made it this far in the video and you like it, smash that like button, everyone. It really does help. Question or comment down below. I love to read your questions or comments. And don't forget if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe bell notification button so you're alerted with all my future weather video updates. Let's continue. All right. So picking up where our HRRR future radar left off as we continue through. Let's just pick up here later on the 20th here 7 p.m look at this yeah this storm winding up here from the ohio valley this coming through right around here it is so there's the low winding up across the northern great lakes here dragging that occluded front boundary through lots of heavy rain and maybe some higher elevation snow the catskills poconos adirondacks Got to watch out for that. Forming some sort of coastal low here. Look at this, the 21st. So as we're heading right around Thursday here, we have two areas of low pressure, one hanging back so that you know there's going to be a trough axis kind of moving through here that's going to focus some of the precipitation. 
I still think this is going to be an elevation snow event. Look how the low just retrogrades back through New York State and Pennsylvania through the 22nd here. So Friday, it's just going to be a miserable day. Cold rain in the valleys and wet snow on the hilltops, especially above 1,800 feet. Look at that, mate. Might actually have some lake enhancement here on the backside of this area of low pressure. Look how this low, let me just put this into motion. Look how it just bounces around until it finally begins to move out on Saturday. It's up towards Maine and Cape Cod here and Nova Scotia, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island. But still, we're getting some effects with it. We, we head into Saturday and Sunday, those proverbial lake effect streamer setting up here on the backside of this low pressure system look at it winding up across the canadian maritimes what do we got to look forward to ahead here so we're looking to thanksgiving week here as we head through the 25th monday next monday and let's just cruise right through here we got a light system that's going to be stretching across the mississippi river valley up towards virginia that's going to be heading to the northeast here and look at that that slides right off the coast with a little rainfall down in through the Carolinas and parts of Georgia as we head on through the 29th. So this actually takes us through Thanksgiving Day. Let's just back that up a second. So yeah, if you're traveling on or just before Thanksgiving Day or even just after, look at that. Yeah, the only inclement weather we can see here is right through this area right here. All right, so let's take a look at snowfall amounts here. There's the Northern Plains as we get on into Thursday. Look what starts to happen here, though. Getting on into those higher elevations of West Virginia, parts of Pennsylvania, and then in Northeast Pennsylvania, Catskills, Poconos area, Adirondacks, and in Northern New England. This is where we're going to start to see some of these higher elevations really kick up here. Let's take a zoom in. There we go. Right on into the... Oh, look at that. There it is, Friday, this is Thursday night into Friday morning, right around Binghamton, Scranton, those areas above 1,800 feet. Would not be surprised, three plus inches here. I know the models are kind of doing the shotgun approach here, just painting the whole area, including the valleys, but the valleys look to stay mostly rain. We could have some wet snowflakes mixing in. Now, down in through parts of the Appalachians here, as we get right into West Virginia here in southwestern Pennsylvania, those normal high elevations, that's where I think you could easily pick up some warning criteria snowfall here. And then look at the Adirondacks right up through the White and Green Mountains. I think you'll pick up three or more inches especially as well. All right, so I'll take a look at the GFS. Yeah, GFS is kind of going crazy here over northeast Pennsylvania. It's showing Wilkes-Barre Scranton here getting 21 inches of snow. Yeah, I do not buy that. Binghamton getting 13 inches. Uh, Elmira over to Ithaca, 6 to 7 inches. Yeah, this is just too much. I would not be surprised if some higher elevations get as high as say three to maybe six inches but this is going to be a heavy wet snow rain will definitely mix in the first part of the storm so we'll keep an eye on these you know these areas definitely have to watch especially these areas circled above 1800 feet but yeah i think the models are kind of overdoing some of this action all right so take a look at the european run here for precipitation amounts wow look at that there in the, the northeast yeah, from Cleveland on eastward here to New York, Pennsylvania, New England, we could be talking about an inch up to as much as three and a half inches of rain. This is going to really help the drought situation. Look at that. Right around northeast Pennsylvania into the Catskills, two to three inches of liquid equivalent. Some of this above 1,800 feet will fall as snow, obviously, and then down in through parts of Florida. Look at the remnants of Sarah with that trough. It's going to weaken, and most areas should only see a quarter to a half an inch, maybe upwards of an inch locally. And our Canadian weather forecast here as we continue to go out here in time. Look at this, stretching through Wednesday into Thursday. It gets pretty quiet across Canada here. Exceptions, southern Ontario and Quebec with this weekend, the end of week into weekend storm. You might have some higher elevation wet snow up here and some valley rain or rain mixing with snow, depending on the temperature profiles. But it's actually going to be a little bit warmer up here than it is down here, surprisingly, uh, into the northeast of the United States. But look at this. As we head through the 23rd and the 24th, that's where we start to see this really begin to spin up here into the Canadian Maritimes. Now, look at this. As we just continue out, look at that. 24th into the 25th. We do get a big, large area of precipitation moving to the north and to the east here. And there we go. Look at that. 
Yeah, our precipitation does cut out, unfortunately. But look at by the 29th, we get this big area of low pressure. It's kind of quieter out here on the west coast of Canada. All right, so take a look at Canada precipitation on mounds here. Look at that. Yeah, southeast Canada here getting quite a bit. Anywhere from, say, 50 to 100 millimeters of rainfall here. Picking up towards about an inch to as much as three inches. And let's take a look at our snowfall here in centimeters. Wow, look at that. Central provinces. You could be picking up close to... That's crazy. 25 to 40 centimeters of snowfall here. Here into southeast Canada as well. Yeah, we're going to be looking at some snowfall, especially in the higher elevations. And look at southwestern Canada here into Brit southwestern British Columbia. Yeah, you could be ending up getting quite a bit in the way of snowfall upwards of 60 to 80 millimeters or centimeters i should say in those higher elevations so looking over to the western pacific here there's actually not a whole lot to talk about thankfully the northern philippines can dry out a bit here we have what's left of manyi here heading towards vietnam as a weak tropical depression remnants basically and that's heading some heavy rain right in through central and northern vietnam now look at here the rest of the pacific yeah we got a big area of low pressure just northeast of japan it's been really dry up here across south and east china here up towards south korea right up here seoul just really clear so as we continue to go out here in time do we have any chance of typhoons kicking up we can take you through the 24th here. There just doesn't seem to be anything. Southern Philippines getting some heavier rains here. But yeah, our precipitation cuts out there around hour 144. And look at that. You know, we go through time here. There's not a, any areas of low pressure. No large areas anyway. And Western Pacific rainfall amounts here. Thankfully, the Philippines have a chance to dry out, especially the northern Philippines. Vietnam is going to be picking up, especially central Vietnam, close to 200 to 300 millimeters here. That's going to get you up towards about 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 inches of rainfall. Southeast Asia really clearing out here with the rainfall. Southern Philippines starting to kick up towards 100 to 150 millimeters. And before we continue with more weather, check out these awesome, amazing maps that you won't find anywhere else. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the states, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code MEDIAMARK, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. Alright, so temperatures are going to be a big story here as we continue through Wednesday, November 20th here. Look at that cold air coming across the northern plains. We still have another day of warmth here in the Ohio Valley into the northeast, getting into the 50s and near 60 in many locations. Into Thursday, though, reality starts to take over as that upper level low kicks in. We're going to start to get a coastal low cranking. Lots of 40s and even some 30s into parts of the Ohio Valley as we get into Friday, November 22nd here. Look at this. Yeah, 40s taking over for the Northeast and some of these mountainous locations above 1,800 feet could be holding in the low to mid 30s here into Saturday, November 23rd. You can see, yeah, we got that colder air, but I think it's going to be mainly confined to those hilltop locations, 30s where you'll get the wet snow, valley rain into near 40 to 45 just a cold, wet rain for those valley locations. As we head on into Sunday, you can still see we're holding on to warmer conditions here, but you start to see evidence of some teens and 20s here across the northern plains. And as we head on into Monday, look at this. That really starts to push south and eastward here, but you can see the trend is still warmer here into the 50s and 60s across the east with 70s here along the Gulf Coast. Extended forecast from our hometown viewers. Bring it into screens the Purcell Square River Valley of New York and Pennsylvania. Look at this. Yeah, so Wednesday is our last warm day heading up towards the mid to high 50s. Chance of showers, especially towards evening. As we get into Wednesday night, showers move in into Thursday. That's where you get the heavy rain and wind kicking up Thursday night. That's when the rain starts to mix with snow, especially those higher elevations could get one to two inches 
inches of slushy accumulation into Friday, an additional one to two inches of slushy accumulation above 1,800 feet. Temperatures struggling to reach 40 into Saturday as well, and we start to clear it out for Sunday. Looking at rainfall, three quarters to one and one half inches of rain. As always, thank you for joining me for this edition of Mark's Weather. Also, don't forget to join me on Facebook at Mark. also Weather Northeastern, also Twitter at Weather Eastern. Don't forget it's Mediamark.com. And don't forget, if you want to send me a coffee, there is a link, Super Thanks. You can smash that Super Thanks button or my PayPal link in the description down below. You can buy me a cup of coffee. Thanks, everyone. Share that video. Subscribe if you haven't. Smash that like button.